This is the Power Apps Podcast from CRM Audio with those dynamics guys and Sean, the CRM Hobbit Tabor. This episode is brought to you by Kingsway Soft. Kingsway Soft is a leading integration solution provider offering software solutions that make data integrations affordable and painlessly easy. Thousands of enterprise clients from over 80 countries and regions rely on Kingsway Soft to integrate data with various business systems in order to drive their business efficiency and fully leverage their information assets. And remember that Kingsway Soft now works with the Common Data Service and Power Apps. We thank Kingsway Soft for sponsoring the Power Apps podcast from CRM Audio. Welcome to another episode of the Power Apps podcast here on the CRM Audio Network. It's been a while, and um, I can't give you a really good excuse other than schedules. But uh, that being said, we're glad to be back with you. Here in the U.S., we have just finished uh, powering through tons and tons of turkey, celebrating Thanksgiving. And uh, I'm the lone, the lone man on the, on the uh, totem pole who did that yesterday. So um, we're back, as always, with uh, my friends from across the pond, as they say. And I hate that saying. But it fits, <laughs> and that's uh, Mr. Will. How's it going? Hello. How you doing? I'm good. Doing well. Doing well. And of course, <sighs> <it's Chris. laughs> so Chris, we have to have a moment of silence. And why do we have to have a moment of silence? Because we're missing the other third of the, those the dynamics. Gorgeous guys. Maine is not the gorgeous here. Maine. The I one that keeps his... us all together. That's I'm, right. I'm I'm just the adult. Him, yeah, yeah that's the adult. A... This is going to be unruly. <laughs> so, uh, Kyle, if you're listening, uh, you, you're you're sadly missed. Kyle, we totally miss you, bro. I love you, Kyle. <laughs> miss you, miss you, bro. But you know, <laughs> I'm excited because I'm not. Let's see, is this our? No, we've had we've had a couple guests so far on the podcast, um, but this is our first three continent episode. That's pretty pretty exciting. Right? Oh yeah, Chris, oh, do yeah. your movie voice. Come on, the three continents episode of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> three men, <laughs> one lady. <link. laughs> That's right. Oh. And, and and after this, she may never do a podcast again. <laughs> <laughs> Out with a bang. <laughs> we have, we're apolog- we we're have apologizing Eliza up front. <laughs> we have Eliza Benitez on the phone, or on the on the pod. How you doing, Eliza? Hey, I'm good. Hello, I told you it was going to be unruly in the uh, prep pre-show, and I uh, I hope this didn't disappoint. No, it's all good. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We'll put up with them. <laughs> <laughs> I only have to go 30 minutes or so, and then we're done. <laughs> so, so, what we wanted to talk about, Eliza, is we wanted to get to know a little bit more about you. We've yeah. been watching your channel, your YouTube channel, and your videos are awesome. Thank you. I actually had someone try to tell me that they knew something, and I was like, hmm, where did you find that? And uh, lo and behold, it was your channel. But um, let's let's get to know what, 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 what's going on with, with Eliza. How long have you been an MVP? How long have you been working in Dynamics? Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Okay, well, first of all, greetings from Sydney. I'm going to try... Say, good day, mate. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> uh, we gave it a go, oh. so cool. Um, yeah, I'm I'm in Sydney at the moment because yes, yesterday it was the ARN Woman in ICT Awards for 2018. Amazing, and, and uh, you've got big news, don't you? Yeah, big news. I, so so I was a a finalist in the technical award category, and. As soon as I announced my name as a winner, I was like, what? That is fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Podcast so I, clap. <laughs> Rarely <laughs> happens. <laughs> That's right. So I celebrated last night, and now I'm, I'm here in the hotel room doing this this podcast chat exclusively with the three wise men. Am I allowed to oh, say wow. that? Wow. <laughs> we are breaking some news oh, here. Hey, look at that. That's outstanding. Yeah, that was like a <laughs> That was a real compliment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, man. I'm, like, fanning myself right now. This is unbelievable. <laughs> Chris has the vapors. Sorry, Kyle. You're yeah. missing out right now. Yeah, Kyle. He totally The is. fourth wise man. 
<laughs> the um, wisest. <laughs> yeah, so um, about me, I've been working with Dynamics since 2009. So I started oh. out with CRM4. And in that role, I had joined the company as, I think, sales admin or sales analyst. I can't remember. <laughs> I, should, I shouldn't really say that. But uh, I was working closely with the GM of sales for a Microsoft partner in New Zealand, and they were using uh, CRM internally. And that's how I, I found my way to Dynamic CRM. And it was on Very it was cool. on CM4. Yeah, so I, I learned from a couple of people back then. So the first one was Sophie, Sophie Kuhn-Hammond. She's still in Wellington, and she is the person I learned everything I know about Dynamic CRM4 back then. She was she was really good. She pretty much just sent me all the... So I don't know if they still have them now, but back then they had a list of... Sorry, not a list, like a collection of PDF files on the modules, you know, things on the sales management. Mm-hmm. Then there was like the case management and then, you know, the other marketing components as well and so that's how I learned Dynamic CM4 and I was given an environment that wasn't a live environment obviously and I would just be learning it through there I was just reading and then she would she would show me certain things as well and then the other person was Brent so Brent Wimmers he's now in Melbourne as well he left Dynamics World though so he's now um working in a Kiwi startup business called Posboss. So it's like a point of sale system and they market to uh, the cafe industry in Melbourne. He's doing well and I learned from him in terms of how to have conversations with clients. So after I moved on from that sales role, I was put into managed services and he was like my buddy, you know what they call it to make it less scary. (laughs) <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'd just shadow him whenever he had calls with the clients because we were supporting clients both in New Zealand and Australia. And so it was really, really good to learn from him. And that's how I got my investigation and, and troubleshooting skills in that space. Because when you work in managed services, the difference is that you're working with more than one client in a day. Right. So I used right. to work with more than 10 clients in a day because they'd have you know, tickets raised and then you'd have to understand what it is that they're they're asking for and there are times where I was like, I don't I don't know, I don't know, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> and so he'd he'd take me through it, but it's it was it was a good learning curve. Like I I really enjoyed managed services because I got that's how I got to learn about all these different industry verticals and how they use dynamics and Back then, it was only Dynamics and and SharePoint. And then as soon as I moved over to to Melbourne, that's when my knowledge just expanded because the company I had joined, they did a lot of IP solutions and they were into ADX Studio portals. So that's how I I learned portals through that company. And so um, my niche back then was working with organizations that, have membership so it was membership management and so we were using ADX Studio portals as the platform for their customers to do their membership registration and then from there it expanded to things like event management as well so I I had worked with a couple of sporting organizations here in Australia well-known ones and that that was really cool I really I really enjoyed that that period of my career because I, I learned so much and if I hadn't moved over to Melbourne I probably wouldn't have found my other passion in the Dynax platform in terms of portals yeah um what what else <laughs> so I well I've well, been when, awarded when, when, oh sorry when, no no when 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 did you get rewarded uh, MVP yeah so I was awarded in May earlier this year that was that was really cool so A funny story behind that, I was in the middle of doing a UAT release and Mm -hmm. it was the first time we were doing a release for this client that we um, became the preferred implementation partner. So it was our first ever UAT release and so we were a bit nervous and um, sure enough, 
there were some things that didn't work out, but we knew how to to resolve it. So while the team was fixing that, I was like, oh, okay, I'll just I'll just check my emails for a second, and I saw an email about a special for MVPs in terms of Satya Nadella's new um, ebook, and right. I was like. I was like, cool, whatever, this is spam. And then when I scrolled further down, that's when I saw the congratulations email. And I was like, what? <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, and because it, it was in my junk folder. And, yeah. and then it, that's when it all sunk in because I, I, I looked at the date and I was like, oh, it's the 2nd of May, so which is the first over, over in the States. And my heart was racing, and I, you know, I, I stood up, I went to go and get water, and then I came back and I, I read it again, and that's when I was like, oh my goodness, I'm an MVP. And then I turned over to my colleague. Everyone else had went out for coffee except for this one colleague, and I asked him, "Is this what I think it is?" So he had a look. He looked at me. He smiled, and he said, "Yes." <laughs> and so we hugged it out, you know, as you do. And then, and then, yeah, that's that's how it happened, and it was. It was really amazing. It was a, a day in my life that I won't forget. And I it's couldn't a pretty even, cool feeling. Yeah, it's a I pretty couldn't, cool feeling. I couldn't even sleep that night. Chris, you could probably relate. Yeah, I was I was actually mine was my sort of story is a little is quite similar as well. I was just shocked and then I climbed on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> but but Chris was more that, like how is that similar? You know what? <laughs> Chris was more like, you know what? Forget it. I don't want it. Yeah, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I don't, if no one ever gives me, I don't care. And then I was like, yeah. that's it. And he's like, "Oh my god, I got it." <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Ah, oh, I don't know if I should do this or try this anymore." Blah 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 blah. And I kind of threw it in the towel. And then it was like, "Oh wait, hang on." <laughs> Steve Mordu told me on Twitter. <laughs> but you know that that's the key, though. That's when that's when you really get it because when you're and that was my experience too. I chased it for so long. And never, it never came to pass. And then when I kind of just said, you know what, if it happens, it happens, and I'm just going to do what I want to do mm-hmm. for the community, and you know, express the, you know, the passion for the platform that I have. That's when it happened. Yeah. So, so it sounds like that's a that's kind of a similar uh, experience across all three of us. Sorry, Will, we don't uh, have the ability uh... to talk about your <laughs> yeah, great podcast, guys. Great podcast. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Glad I came. Don't, yeah, really, don't really get involved. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn on the filter now, where everything we say is an NDA and is hoots and clicks to you. So, no, I'm just kidding. Um, no, I'm sure we'll be announcing Will getting yeah. his his uh, very soon. I'm gonna buy mine off the internet. <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll have our first uh, FNO uh, MVP in the uh, on the podcast. That would be fun. That would be amazing. Yeah. So, so Eliza, Flow. Yes. What was what was your first experience with Flow? <laughs> and what made you go, oh wow, this is something really cool. Uh, all right. So, in around the world, we have the Dynax three six five Saturday conferences, right? And mm-hmm. in in May in Melbourne, we had we had our one, and. I really wanted to do Flow, but I didn't have enough time, so I stuck with Dynamics 365 workflows. And what what I showcased was something I wanted to put together, which was, can you use universal resource scheduling for anything? And so I, I came up with a business scenario for grant application management. So... I did my research and I had found that there are still organizations here in Australia, probably probably around the world as well, where mm-hmm. they're still wanting people to submit their applications either through email or through a document, but you have to print it off from their website and then, you know, fill it out, scan it, send it back to sure. email or through mail. And so I, I wanted to see whether I could do Dynamics Portals and universal resource scheduling which is what I did and I used workflows and I really wanted to use flow but I I simply didn't have enough time and then when the opportunity came to present in New Zealand in sep- September October September that's when I decided okay I'm going to challenge myself and I'll go ahead and learn flow and I'll see whether I can replicate 
all those workflows that I created into Flow and see whether Flow can actually handle it. And the interesting thing is when I did it with Dynamics v 65 workflows, I had to use a solution that was built by another MVP in our community, Aiden, and Mm -hmm. I used one of his custom workflow activities. And then when I went through the process of replicating it in Flow, I realized, oh, I don't, I don't need to use a custom workflow activity anymore. I can, I can do this myself using this particular action. So I do have this planned in my upcoming WTF series in my advanced level topic. So for those who are interested, make sure you do subscribe. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. I got to advertise it. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, but that, that experience and that whole experience, I went from being very, very frustrated t- and, and swearing Hence the mm-hmm. W, hence the WTF <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, gimmick of my series, and then from there I I became a fan of flow because after I got past that learning curve and that hurdle, that's when I realized wow I can be creative, I can do a lot with flow, and through the experience of frustration, I realized there are going to be other people in the community who are going to go through the similar thought process and frustrations. And so that's how I decided to create my WTF series to start with the beginner level topics and showing people that what you already know in Dynamics 365 workflows in terms of configuration, you can apply it today in Flow. You just need to learn what what flow actions or triggers you need to use and then the expression as well because there's a lot of flow actions in there as you all know if you have played with flow and some of them I still haven't learnt because there's there's just too many but at the same time it's it's also nice exploring I could talk about it all day (laughs) (laughs) I get very nerdy when it comes to flow I honestly when I when I um as soon as I get off work the first thing I think about is oh what am I going to play with flow in terms of tonight yeah it's so it's so bad and then I avoid I avoid doing the dishes when I get home because I'm I'm just like I just want to play with a flow (laughs) (laughs) so here's an interesting fact the reason why I do a lot of playtime um in the Dynamics platform is I actually don't have a tv and I don't have any subscription to any streaming service services, you know, things like Netflix. Yeah. That's amazing. So I do really? a lot of my No yeah. distractions. No yeah. distractions. Wow. Like yeah, How so productive I s- are you? <laughs> yeah, that's 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 impressive. Yeah. You see, <laughs> so, I, I, don't, I don't know how I can't get by without it because I have kids. So yeah. <laughs> gee, that's crazy. Yeah. So oh, I'm glad to see that not only is outside <laughs> of America where we parent by our your TV bro. as well, so bro, I, I, did like, same, I did the same. So yes, <laughs> <laughs> e, e, that is amazing. Seriously, so you spend yeah, instead of watching series, seriously. you you're rocking out, uh, rocking out on the power platform, doing amazing things. Yeah, that's how I have time to to vlog and come up with yeah. the ideas for my my episode. Like it does, it takes quite a lot of time to do editing mm-hmm. for for vlogs. Um, mm-hmm. I think everyone who has gone through it before will will understand what I mean. Yep. But mm-hmm. I think I'm I think I'm getting better at it with time. I love I love your I love your series, and honestly, I think the editing's great. So I actually used your it as an example. Great, yeah. yeah, I used it as an example the other day with somebody that was looking to vlog, and I was like, "Wait, you must see this crazy chick in uh, in Oz." <laughs> yeah, she- <laughs> and, and, and the name of her and the name of her show is even cooler. I support yeah. this. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's epic. I, I think it's got such a cool vibe, and it's really, it's really educational. And yeah. um, I, as a flow beginner, genuinely, I've, it's, I've got this weird mental block against it. Um, I've committed to dedicating time in the next couple of weeks to actually learning through your, through your channel. So I've got to go and rewatch a bunch of stuff. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I think I'll do the same as well. I've, I've started playing with it a lot more, and uh, yeah, it's something I definitely need. To- Need to look at WTF. Oh yeah, we've also we also, <laughs> we're also referencing you. So Will is hosting an internal hackathon um, at Hitachi, 
and um, one of the one of the uh, one of the one of the pieces of content that we want people to go to and actually use to learn flow is your vlog. Oh, thanks, guys. And we've done the same on the North America side. Um, Joel Lindstrom just had a an internal lunch and learn, and he and he referenced your vlog as well. And I am uh, going out drinking this weekend, and everyone I bump into that I meet <laughs> new friends, I'm going to get them to sign up and subscribe. So uh, stand back because it's about to explode. That's right. that's right. <laughs> if you've ever been out drinking with Will, that's exactly what's going to happen. Oh, there's so much dynamics chat, and everyone turns around and goes, Who are you? What are you going on about? Why, why do you have a laptop out? Where did you get the projector from? Yeah, it's great. It's great fun. Laser yeah, beams. You know, they, they just look at Will and say, what, Tell me more about you. No, no, no. Let's talk virtual links. <laughs> well, so, <yeah>. Canvas apps. <laughs> so... So, did, uh, Chris and Will, uh, when you when you jumped into Flow, did you guys have a similar kind of epiphany, or what was what was that experience like for you? I can I can speak from my behalf and say no. Yeah, I'm still trying to go through the iron curtain of epiphany having um, right now. I mean, very honestly, like my biggest focus, when I, my biggest focus was was on the data side of things, so common data service, mm-hmm. and um, around Canvas apps because they were new and they were shiny. And then um, I started. I've started running into scenarios where I I have to use Flow, but I can't get past the. There's just so many things I don't understand, and I guess it's the triggers. Like I'm so used to Dynamics and Dynamics mm-hmm. customer engagement that it's, it's just something I've got to wrap my mind around. But I know the possibilities, and I know I need to get better with them. And yeah, like I said, in the next few weeks, that'll be my focus. Yeah, I guess from my point of view, uh, I. I I took to it quite quickly to a point. So I always think it's it's, it's, it's one of those things, it's really easy to, to start off with and you, you start chipping away, but then suddenly you're, you're reached like the, the, end of a, the end of the road, the end of a cliff, and you, you have to start using your Google Foo. So uh, my, <laughs> right. my, my first one that I, that I ever did was, uh, I, I, was, I was starting to get, get getting my hand on the, on, on the Power Apps and I was building a Canvas app and I wanted the ability to take a picture but attach it back to a to to a SharePoint repository uh, that that's attached to an account in in CE, mm-hmm. and uh, I used Flow for that, and it, it it got to a point where I was able to submit the 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 string off the image string, but then it it kept saying something about a base sixty four needs to be converted, and I was like, what the hell, what the hell even is that, you know? And that's when I started doing a bit of Google Foo and, and using that, but. But I, I found that as a bit of a blocker, so I didn't really find it that citizen developer friendly to start with, but now I'm really starting to get it. So most recently, uh, integrating customer engagement to FinOps, you know, PSA to projects, and right. I'm starting to understand it a bit more now, but still nowhere near as, as, uh, as great as, as E. Well, and you know, it's, it's funny because it's, it's so powerful, uh, and I didn't mean that as a pun, Wait. But uh, but you know it it really <laughs> is pun and prison. <laughs> <laughs> you could come out on pun probation shortly. That's right. Talk. <laughs> That's right. So on, on my pro on one of my projects, we have a project manager who really loves. He used to be an architect, and he really loves doing that stuff. Right. Well, he discovered Flow. So as soon as he discovered Flow and got excited about it, the the conversation started amongst the project team. And I get this this Teams message, hey, PM just found Flow. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay. So then later on in the, in the evening, I'm having a call with him. And he goes, hey, and let me tell you, I found Fl- I, I just started using Flow. Yes, I know. <laughs> Whoa, what do you mean you know? I, I know whenever you find something in the environment that you get excited about. I just want to let you know that. People tell me <laughs> and make sure I understand. <laughs> We won't be using that here. Not and by we, I mean you. You can't you do that in your own time. Have fun with it. You're not using it in the project. But it 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 just speaks to how accessible it is and how I I do like it better than Dynamics workflow. I would always run into I would always run into a blocker with Dynamics workflow when it came to the point of a custom work, needing a custom workflow or a custom action, right? I eventually got past the action part where that I can I can do those fine, but when it would come to a custom workflow, I don't develop. I'm not a developer, so I would have to hand it off to someone else. With Flow, I can do a lot more things myself, which is very cool, 
and once we once we mature the ability to uh, make those flows portable via solution management, I think it's going to be even even more powerful. So, it, it's it, it's it's a really impressive uh, set of functionality that they're making, and I love how they're exposing it across not only Dynamics but Office as well. Yeah, that's that's a, that for me is a huge thing, huge. So yeah, I mean, being able to invoke things outside of Dynamics is, I think, one of the larger things that that mm. people maybe don't really understand how to deal with in an implementation. Because when when you're when you're dealing with normal Dynamics workflow, everything's within Dynamics, right? It's within yep. that box. With Flow, you have the ability to trigger whatever you want to trigger, I mean, as long as it's in one of those connectors, or a custom connector, and uh, do what you want. So, um, for example, I just found out, I just got, a, I just got a, a, a car that has a, you can connect to Google Assistant via their events thing, right? And I, was, I started thinking, wow, so technically... I could create probably a custom connector to the Google Assistant API and create an action there that then I could I could send someone an email and start my car. That's just wow. Oh wow, can I have that email please? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you see what I'm saying? I could create a flow button and start my car. Things like that. It's Dude, that it's, is it's crazy. Level. It's crazy. So, um it's an it's an incredibly incredibly powerful powerful yeah. platform, but and just so you know, Eliza, we are going to put links to to your uh, YouTube channel, your vlog, in the show Thank notes, you. so everybody will have access to that, and yeah. we will promote that um, as well. Um, but you talked briefly about what what made you want to start the YouTube channel. Why why a vlog, and what 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 really? Because for me, a vlog. I, I would one. I would. I have hat hair like all the time, <laughs> and I would have to work on that. Um, my office looks like a child's room, so with all my toys. So I, I. I don't know if I'd have the setup. But what? What? What drove you to a vlog, as opposed to just a normal blog? Yeah, that that, that you know, that's actually a good question. Um, okay, so I started my vlog in 2014, and. I wanted to do it because all most of the YouTube videos that were available were recording webinars and you'd have to hope that when you click ahead and during that webinar you get to the information that you want and then when it finally gets to the demonstration of what they're talking about cuz you, you know you all know what webinars are like mm-hmm. there's a ton of talking and then when it comes to the demonstration it's about five minutes and you're like oh but i want to see more why can't you give right. me more absolutely and and um the the other person who was doing you know video snippets as well was a guy called richard K- knudsen knudsen sorry i, I probably richard knudsen yeah yep, I'm, so i was probably um pronouncing his name wrong so he was doing some some video snippets as well and i i find that more useful for learning because sometimes you can have a barrier with a blog for someone who doesn't understand english fluently and Mm -hmm. i thought that by doing a vlog people can follow along without necessarily understanding what you're saying in terms of um you know your your content when you're speaking about it in English, but when they see you clicking through throughout Dynamics 365, then they can follow it as well as work out what you want. And then the other thing that I wanted to do was bring Dynamics into the YouTube space because there wasn't many people who were doing it back then, mm-hmm. and a lot of the video that the videos that you see in, in YouTube and you still see them today is on things that aren't technology focus in terms of enterprise so uh, i don't know like how to make shepherd's pie (laughs) 
it's yeah. so red. Oh, so you've, you've, seen my, uh, you've seen my vlog, have you? <laughs> Thank you. Please tell your friends. <laughs> oh, that's, that's one called Will, Will Cooks in His Pants. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, 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 I'm I a think... very niche demographic, I feel there. <laughs> 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 I feel like that conversation could go a bit haywire, so... Let, yeah, we should carry on. <laughs> <laughs> what, else, what else do I cook, you ask, Chris? Well... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, but, um, yeah, in terms, of, in terms of YouTube, sorry, I'm trying to, I'm trying to bring this conversation Shepherd's back. Pie. You are doing <laughs> a wonderful job. This wouldn't happen if Carl was here. <laughs> I'd be pulling on our leashes. You're, a, you're an adult among children, so you're <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, YouTube. Like, I I really like YouTube as as a, a platform or a channel in terms of putting content out there because it's it's fun. Like, you can have fun with it. Like, I've had fun with my videos. One of my early videos, I did a deep dive into um, the. I think it was the high. Was it the product structure or the hierarchical security? One of them. But I I wore swimming goggles. You know, in it <laughs> the whole the whole time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this. Oh, please share the link. Oh, I've been got to share the link. We've got Wait, to. It wasn't. Oh, I wasn't. Amazing. I wasn't wearing it like in terms of over my eyes. It was more on, on my forehead. And then when I stopped doing that recording, I had like the red suction marks on my forehead <laughs> <laughs> for about an hour because I was just yeah from that recording. It was <laughs> really? fun. Yeah. But it, it's just a way of, of showing dynamics and having having fun with it and not not being too serious at, at times. Uh, I and take all this very seriously. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, and, and, well, and, and flow is only part of your overall vlog, yeah. right? Yeah, correct. Um, it's actually a very small part of the blog as of, as of right now. Yeah. You have yeah. a lot more content with portals and, and, other, and other components as well, so... A lot more, and you have wow! Look at you. You have over three hundred, almost four hundred subscribers. Oh, really? I haven't checked. Yeah, yeah as of right now, as, as of recording, you have three hundred ninety-three. After my Ooh. night of drinking, seven hundred. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going out with well, a, a tablet and everything, and say subscribe. Enter your credentials. Subscribe. Oh man, I need right, to start giving our, you commission. Here, here's our goal, boys. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna get her above five hundred. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no problem. There you go. Thanks. That. There you that's go. A, that's Thank a wonderful you. idea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we, we haven't put a time frame on that, so it's achievable, right? We can, well, within, within the next 20 years, we get that up. Yes. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so I'll, I'll I, I also have a proposition. If we get okay. over 500, then Will has to do a cooking shepherd's pie vlog. Uh-oh. That's amazing. Yes, I'll do it. I will absolutely yes. do that. And only, only us four will find it funny. So, <laughs> so, so would it would it be Will's version of Drunk Kitchen? That's the question. It's this always is such a good idea. Maybe. Yeah, I love this plan. Yeah. Oh, we should do it anyway. Like regardless. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm up for this. Will's okay. going to do it right now. Dude, you're coming to my house in like oh, a week Sunday. and a half. Let's get drunk and cook shepherd's pie. Ah, oh, Nicole would not have a problem with that. <laughs> no, it should be fine. And then a mashed potato fight. Yeah. Yes. Like, this is the herding cat. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing the power platform before that, though. So it's, That's right. Uh, Balance That's right. out. Yeah, we actually really are we're, doing real, yeah, real, yeah, we're, real we're boy work. Yeah, we're on Sunday to do some proper, proper work. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So, let me, <laughs> let me pull you back in. <laughs> Uh, let's. I want to get your opinions, uh, Chris and Will, and then we'll go to Eliza. What are your thoughts about Flow in the Enterprise? Is it ready? Is it not ready? Uh, are you well, are you only using Flow for when you're going outside of Dynamics? Are you still using Workflow inside? What are your thoughts? I'm gonna pull a Gustav and say it depends. <laughs> um, that's all right. Yeah, I, it depends how. Yeah, it's well. You see. <laughs> It dep- depends what you want to do with it, really. I mean, some people are using Flow to move data between points. Uh, I don't know if that's what you should be doing, using Flow for an enterprise. That's probably a Logic Apps discussion, I guess. But then again, I don't know Flow as well as I should, so I couldn't tell you all of the core differences between the products. I know it's kind of built on the concept. Um, but I also think I've also think you've got to be a bit careful around things like Flow Armageddon. Like, I've always made the joke around App Armageddon. But um, if you're giving people access to automate everything, 
you know, that's that's just going to break. So I would probably be a little hesitant around how it was used, um, and that that's just my opinion, I guess. Will, what do you think? I think about lots, to be honest, Sean. But on this uh, particular subject, uh, I would I would sort of echo what Chris has said. So I would say for for the for the non enterprise level, so. Uh, sort of just setting up occasional flows that you're not going to set off often, uh, you're not going to use lots of, then I, I would use uh, flow. But when it comes to enterprise level integrations, such as uh, maybe integrating the stack, which we can argue about the best ways to integrate the stack, but just use this as an example between mm-hmm. CE and FNO, then, then logic apps are the root, both from a subscription and financial perspective and, and mm-hmm. from actually, uh, I, I, I'm trying to think of the right word for it, but like a load bearing as well. Uh, that's my view at the moment, and, and, and okay. you know, but and that yeah. may change over the coming weeks. With, like I said, I'm getting more involved with Flow at the moment. But the, I've got right. so I've Eliza. Got... Tell them why they're wrong. Oh. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. What do you What do you think, Eliza? Well, I I struggle with this question because I'm still exploring and and learning Flow myself, and the way I I think and and play with Flow is is more of finding a a creative way to to manage a a process that you previously weren't able to do in Dynamics 365 workflows without custom code or it simply wasn't possible. And I haven't yet thought about an end-to-end process other than what I showcased in my um, my grant application management solution that I had put together. Because mm-hmm. in, terms, in terms of enterprise, I, I would say... Hmm, actually... <laughs> Hmm, it's not a word. <laughs> it's totally a no, word. I, no, no. <laughs> it's very introspective. It's very contemplative. Mm, it's, I like it. It's, uh, I, yeah, it's hard because the the project that I was working on uh, with a government agency, we we didn't use Flow. We used um, Azure Function because the government agency, they had an enterprise agreement for um, Azure so it made mm-hmm. sense to use Azure Functions, and that was mm-hmm. doing daily scheduled um, calculations on on date fields as well as other fields so that it could represent the number of records that were still open or, or not closed for reporting purposes. So that, that worked fine. Could we have done it in Flow? Probably. I probably can't explain why we couldn't do it in Flow because course i'm under um and sure. with with that government agency sure um i yeah hmm <laughs> that's all i can say yeah, but it's, in it's, terms, it's such a tough question yeah but in in terms of what you can do with flow that i went through in terms of the grant application management i i really liked how you could just interact with interact with universal resource scheduling in terms of getting the records created that you need for the schedule board to work in the way that Mm -hmm. you want it to. So what I mean is when you create a resource requirement in Dynamics 365, you can either create it as is or if you want to provide the experience where when that user goes to the schedule board and they only see the resources based on the resource characteristics of that resource requirement, then you need to go and create an additional resource characteristic record for that resource requirement, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I liked how Flow could do that for me. Dino365 Workflow could do that for me as well, but it was was just cool that you could replicate the same thing in in Flow, and it just does it faster, like way faster than Dino365 Workflows. And there's a couple of things to that. There, the UI is much... I like the UI of Flow much better. Yeah. Um, the graphical nature of it to where I can, when I'm testing it, with a with a Dynamics workflow, if I test that and it fails, I can get, um, if I remember to not delete my um, my, my logs when it's done, yeah. um, I, could, I, could, I could see what happened, but I can't graphically see what happened. With flows, I can. Yeah. With flows, I can resubmit. Once I change it, I can resubmit using a previous execution. Can't do that with workflow. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah. So there's a lot of cool things that, that flow gives you um, that I, I think improve the experience for a configuration yeah. um, than, than workflow does. And, and I think your, your answer of mm-hmm <laughs> is actually correct because for the enterprise, it really depends, right? It depends on the space that you're in because the enterprise is a big space. Um, government agencies is a is a big one. Um, also, certain manufacturing ex, uh, areas. Uh, to Chris's point, how you're integrating. Um, so, for example, if you're integrating with with let's say you're integrating with Oracle Cloud ERP, there's no connector for that. So mm-hmm. you're going to have to go back and create some kind of integration point, and you're most likely not going to use Flow for that. You're going to use the standard integration method whether it's a middleware that your your client already has installed, SSIS, Kingsway Soft, you know, something to that effect. Maybe maybe even um, um, Scribe. So it really does depend. And what I, what I think Flow gives us is a palette to, of, of additional choices we never had before. It really enables the um, the the business user. Or the um, I can't think of the the phrase the the citizen developer. Yeah, there we go. Well, that's yeah. what it was. It really enables them to do more. Um, if you give permissions to your users to create their own flows, they can manage their their data the way they want to. Um, so it, it it's a lot it's a lot more powerful tooling than we've had in the past, and and yeah. I think that's. That's really cool. So, so you weren't also, wrong with, with sorry. Hmm. No, you're fine. Go ahead. I, I, yeah, I agree. I think it's it's hugely around. It depends. Um, can I chuck something in there just before we carry on? Like, I had a discussion with somebody the other day around this, and 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 just a comment on the in enterprise thing. I think it I think it could, probably could be useful because a lot of enterprise organizations, their businesses are quite siloed into into kind of smaller areas. So if I take we we've got customer, let's call them customer X, right? They're definitely mm-hmm. enterprise. They've got about nine different streams from a project perspective running. And I mean, in one stream, right, they might only have like 10 users. And then they're not actually integrating data. So I'm like, actually, that's, it's not a, re- not, not a bad idea to use Flow in that scenario because, you know, you're empowering the, and they're very savvy users. So you're empowering them to really promote o- automation in the, their daily tasks. But then there's another part of the business that's 400 users or 500 users. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, well, no. No, not a great idea. You'll get flow on Mageddon and then you basically, and and also comes down to like you know, can you write? Or do you have permission to write if you're doing using it for integration? And which I'm really skeptical of, just in my in my head, it's like, you know, do you have write access? Date? Do you have write access into that source or read access from the source? There's a whole bunch of stuff that this comes with. So for now, like in my brain, I think it probably could be used in enterprise, but you'd have to be quite careful about how. I like it. It's a good point. So, what we're, we're we're getting close to time. So, what I, what I'd like to ask Eliza, what is your favorite thing you can do with Flow? Oh man, putting me on the spot. <laughs> yep, is when it happens. <laughs> my my most favorite thing. Um, I, okay, I'm going to answer this differently in terms okay. of why I like flow and it's okay and as as consultants and as you know people we we configure and we live and breathe dynamics 365 there are things that flow can solve that you weren't able to solve in the past so i have an upcoming wtf episode i haven't published it yet because uh chris and will this will be my first WTF episode where I will be uploading my flow into the Pair Apps Bank. Yay! <laughs> and that was that was the that was the last bit remaining. So I actually had Anti and Natraj. So shout out to those two guys in the community. Uh, test it out for me because I wanted to make sure that if I provided a dummy email address, it would work if you imported my exported flow into your instance and that that's all good so i've got that or i've got that ready to go but in in this episode i i talk about how you need to use the convert time zone action to be able to display your uh dynamic 365 date and time field value correctly in an email now 
there might be people listening as well as watching the the, ep- the upcoming episode thinking, oh, wh- why do I have to use this action? I don't have to use this in Dynamics 365 workflows. You know, this is a piece of crap. This is why I hate flow. Blah, 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 blah. But... <laughs> <laughs> wow, I got a massive wrong then. I was really waiting for it. Like, whoa, whoa. 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 That, that turned it. No, but, turned but it's... Quick. But I, don't, I hate I, you. I hate you. <laughs> but I, I don't know if you have met people like that yet who are very resilient to flow. Yes. Um, because... Chris is what, one. <laughs> because, I mean, yeah, flow might seem extra in terms of all the different actions you need to use, like the convert time zone. But what I don't explain in my vlog, but what I do explain in my blog post, so my my write-up, is that it actually solves this ongoing problem that has been around since forever. So in Dynamics 365, when you configure an email activity in a Dynamics 365 workflow in terms of, you know, send after it meets all this criteria and you insert that date and time value, you can't format it in the email. But with Flow, you can do that. You can format the date and time field value in whatever way you want, whereas in Dynamics 365 workflows, or if you look at the forum, so I, I provide the forum posts in my, in my blog post, it talks about you know you have to use JavaScript or create another field that mm-hmm. will store the date and time value in the way that you want it to, you know, as a, as, a, as a string, but in Flow, you can just do it in one click, and that's the value of Flow that I like. It's it's solving problems that required code or some other creative way to get it working in a in the way that you want it to in a Dynamics 365 workflow. But it's it's things like that where I'm trying to educate people that you need to see beyond this wall or this restriction or this block and frustrations of having to configure one step extra or one action extra in in Flow than you're used to in Dynamics 365. But what Flow can bring to the table is so much greater than what Dynamics 365 workflow can provide. And I'm not saying that I'm taking sides with Flow. It's, it's, It's there because it is it's Cool. Well, not cool. Sorry, yeah. I don't know where I'm going. No, it with is this. cool. <laughs> it is cool. It is cool. You're not wrong. But, but it's 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 taking it's taking less effort. Or oh, actually, no, that's a lie because you do have to spend more time configuring Flow compared to Dynamics V six five workflow. But it's solving things that you used to see as an issue, and you can find those issues in multiple blog posts. But then, when you use it, when you configure info, it just solves it straight away, and that's that's what I really like. Very cool. Well, Eliza, I think we're at time. Yeah. So tell tell the people out there, should you want to be contacted, how can they reach out to you on the giant interwebs? Um, you can contact my agent, Will. <laughs> <laughs> and that's on zero seven. <laughs> Um, I'm on I'm on Twitter. Um, my hand my ha- do you say handle or handler? Handler, handler. handler. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh gosh! Handle. As, as, Our handler's not here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's um, Vinitas here. I'm also on LinkedIn, and as I said, I have an agent. His name is Will. He will make an upcoming Shepherd's Pie video. Yeah, sure will. And so I expect to see Chris and Kyle as his assistants as well to make sure that (laughs) he does a good job. (laughs) Otherwise, he's not going to get the commission after this podcast. (laughs) I'm going to send you a uh, slice of that Shepherd's Pie in the mail. It's right. Turn up fresh and delicious. Oh, I don't know why that sounded romantic, but it just did. <laughs> well, in case in case um people who don't know me that well yet, well I can't eat shepherd's pie because I'm actually vegan. You're vegan, you're vegan yeah. I'm gonna send you a there vegan you shepherd's pie. It's gonna be fresh and delicious. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna use impossible meat. Exactly. <laughs> I tried that. I the, I tried impossible an impossible burger. Meat. What's that? Oh yeah. No, there's a thing called... Do you know what I'm talking about, Eliza? Yeah, I have, and 
I don't know whether I want to try it when I'm in the in the states next okay. year. So let me tell you, I was skeptical, right? Yeah. Because you know I've had the veggie burgers and the black bean burgers, and they're fine. Yeah. But they get all crumbly and they're messy and they fall apart. Sounds like the Chris. impossible. No. <laughs> <laughs> pressure, right before our presentation. Wow. Seems like he's apart. figured out the game. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, the impossible part. burger literally tasted like meat, like a burger, like a proper burger. What? Oh, it what's was it amazing. made of? What's it Blown made of? I have no idea, and away. I don't want to know. Oh, yeah. It was just fantastic. Don't meet your heroes. Don't look at those right. dreams. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It was it was fantastic. So I, I recommend it highly. If when you're uh, if when you're in the states, if they don't have it where you are, uh, give it a try. It's very good. But um, yeah, so we'll put we'll put links to all of your uh, your social uh, media links in the podcast notes. We will promote heavily your your YouTube channel. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna try to get you over five hundred. That's uh, that's our goal. Yes, that's please. The, the Power Apps Podcast uh, promotion push. I try to think of multiple le- words with a letter P for some reason. I don't. <laughs> Peanuts, <know>. pudding, <laughs> promotion, <laughs> princess. Right. Well, I was right. gonna just something, but I don't think it's appropriate. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm oh, so happy so right now. <laughs> yes, and e- everyone, yes, everyone though. who's listening. If I do get over 500, then my agent will. He will provide <laughs> a cooking I demonstration. Oh. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> a pudding demonstration. Oh, oh, wait. We've had one of those. Well, oh. Yeah, yeah. There's a, wait. Oh, okay. Pudding is in... No, never mind. Pudding? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you I need to close this off, Sean. Seriously. Yeah, on that note, we're going to wrap it's up this episode of the Pirates Podcast. Thank you so much, Eliza, for being a guest, and I hope it hasn't affected you too much emotionally. Um, but uh, it, it was a, it was a great conversation, and, and we really appreciate you being here. No, Thank it's you. okay. Thank you, E. You're Thank awesome. You so much. And everybody else, we will be back hopefully sooner than a month and a half from now um, if we can get uh, these uh, these Brits to um, stay to a schedule. Uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do. So uh, until next time on the Power Apps Podcast. Bye. This has been the Power Apps Podcast from CRM Audio. Send us your feedback at mail at powerappspodcast.com. Check out other episodes from the CRM Audio Network by going to CRM Audio in your browser or searching for CRM Audio on Spotify, Google Play, iTunes, Stitcher, tune in any place else that you can find podcasts. This is a production of Dynamics Podcast LLC. 